questo tempo. Bruce Sterling, dove sei? Ciao Giuseppe, buona, buona mezza. Welcome back. Got my clicker handy. Ok. Super. That was true, I, I am Bruce Sterling. Um, and this is uh, the, our best known uh, maker project here. This is uh, Casa Yasmina, uh, which we a project that we announced here at Maker Faire two years ago. Um, that's uh, the Yasmina of Casa Yasmina over there. And uh, we have our little outreach here for Casa Yasmina in uh, pa pa Padiglione Sette, Pavilion 7 of Maker Faire. Um, And it's become quite a nice little maker residence after two years of work. Uh, when you have an open house like this maker house of the future, you get a lot of new friends at your house, especially women. Because women have a lot to think, say, and do about housing projects. So, uh, you know, people come and visit our little maker house of the future where we're eating and sleeping and inventing projects. And I'm happy about it because the Turinese appear and they're like, so this is the Torino house of the future, is it? Yeah, es simpatico. But yeah, it's actually quite nice and very Turinese. The coffee is good here. God, we have excellent coffee at Casa Yasmina. Uh, so, you know, Viva Torino and Avanti Piemonte. Uh, so, but, but what next for Italy? I mean, what, what next for the Italian maker movement? Okay, you may know I'm a design critic, so I tend to get a little abstruse. But this is the big picture, or a big picture. Uh, it's a design theory chart, and it's about the difference between conventional objects, which are the oggetti convenzionali in the middle, and the kind of objects that people in the maker movement like the open source hardware people who are off at the fringe there. Um, the conventional objects are kind of things you can buy at Ikea. Uh, but the world of all objects is much bigger than the world of conventional objects. These are just objects that flourish under standard forms of capitalism. You know, and in Silicon Valley, the idea is that you take one of these fringe ideas, something that's strange or pioneering, and you find a business model for it, so you can make some profit, and you find financiers, and you find some way to promote it and create some desire for it, and then you hire some engineers so you could like make it, and then it becomes a popular success, and everybody buys it, and you can just have it, and it's conventional. Okay, that's called innovation, but that's not the most profound kind of innovation, The really profound innovation is when you move the circles. You use cultural power, really. You, you move the circles around, and, and that would be the Italian approach. I'll give you a kind of interesting example of that. Okay, here's the Leonardo da Vinci robot construction kit. And I could talk about this all day because, of course, Leonardo, a very fascinating figure. But this is the robot lion that Leonardo made for the King of France sometime in, I don't know, the early 1500s. It moved, uh, it spat out flowers. Uh, Leonardo built a lot of special effects objects. This was actually Leonardo's main job. We remember him as a painter because the paintings were classified as art, but these gadgets that Leonardo built were actually very popular in his day. I mean, he made artworks for court performances, just kind of, you know, and bizarre musical objects. I mean, a lot of one-off kind of prototype objects that makers would recognize, which is why makers would recognize this now. I mean, this is the, one of the biggest tour, tourist souvenir hits in the contem contemporary Leo, Leo, Leonardo da Vinci industry. Thousands of these little wooden robot kits get sold to foreigners every year. And these buildings out here, these pavilions, are just full of objects that look just like this. Maker Faire 2016 is full of these things, which have become conventional because they're amazing. 
Only Italians can pull that off, I think. It's a very difficult thing to do. So, you know, what does that mean for the future of Italian making? Well, this, in my opinion, is what's actually going to happen over like the next 10 years. This is industry consolidation at work. Um, I'm a science fiction writer, a visionary, yes I am. People often ask me, you know, you're a futurist, are we going to get a science fiction singularity in the future? No. This is what we're going to get, Detroit. This is the Detroit model of digital industry consolidation. Google, Apple, Facebook, Amazon, and Microsoft, the new five majors of the internet. Five big industries doing many things that the internet cannot do cloud, storage, uh, deep learning, operating systems, talking machines, many other things, it's just part of the list here. They're very rich, they're the richest companies, the richest industries in the world now. They're powerful. When they see something threatening them, they will acquire it. They're going to behave the way General Motors, Ford, and Chrysler behaved, because they're American companies. That's how it's going to be, okay? The internet is going to, internet age will fade away like the space age and the atomic age. It lasted about as long as the space age and the atomic age, and it's ending in a very similar way. And in three years, this will be obvious. Everyone will agree. This is just what's happening. I mean, all the money, most of the big tech is on their side, and uh, you know, that's not surprise in Italy. The maker movement is going to change in these new industrial realities, but it's big and strong now, especially in Italy, and I expect it to adapt rather well. Um, the flat world of the internet will go away. We're entering a situation where regions will have more power. I mean, regions that have fab labs in them will do very well, but also you know, the conventional creative cities of Italy will do very well under this new post-internet situation. What does that look like? Luso open source, I sometimes call it, or really the tradition of Italian technology art. Okay, this is Gruppo T. Gruppo T from Milan in the early 1960s. Kinetic artists and machine artists friends of Bruno Munari, he was their mentor, allies of Olivetti, they used to get a lot of industrial backing from Olinetti, because they were technology artists, artists of the space age. Kinetics artists, they made installations, they made motor-driven art, plastic, light, perspex, Grazia Varisco, Giovanni Anceschi, Davide Boriani, a couple of their colleagues who were no longer with us. Okay, this is the Italian technology art model. It was kind of eclipsed for a while, but this is the Italian response to American in industrial consolidation. Okay, if you are Ford and General Motors and Chrysler, we are Alfa Romeo. If you are McDonald's, we are slow food. If you are Le Levi's jeans, we are Armani. And this is the response, okay? Uh, this would have gone on had Moore's Law never happened, because these are pre-digital artists. These are electric artists rather than electronic artists. But Moore's Law is about to die. There will be two more doublings, and then Intel just can't afford to make the chips. It's just going to stop. And this you know, tremendous force, Moore's Law, which propelled things throughout my entire lifetime, will become a thing of the past. It'll be like the supersonic transports where planes got continually faster, and then they just didn't get any faster anymore. It couldn't be made to pay. So if digital technology slows down, then Group OT and their approach actually looks very attractive again. Most of their activities make sense. History moves into their direction. We will see. And this is a test of that idea. This is the reprogrammed art project from the Supsi Design School, where Massimo Bonzi teaches. These are people reinventing analog Group OT art objects with contemporary electronics. Maker open source technologies applied to the Italian technology art tradition to reprogram what had been programmed, or to kind of rebuild it for new cultural conditions. Um, this, to me, is an ideal project 
for Italian making. That's one of the wisest and most profound things I've ever seen the Italian maker community do. Uh, it's about Italian cultural continuity, looking into history in order to see a path forward, looking backward in order to look ahead. All right, Italy is here. You, you live through the atomic age. You live through the space age. You have, shortly, you will have lived through the internet age. You even laughed. You lived through all those days. You're still here. Italy, under conditions to come, has plenty to say, plenty to think, and especially a lot to create, make, and do. This is Serena Canjano. She's basically the muse of this reprogrammed art effort, just one person. Okay, suppose you're a maker activist in the room and you say, okay, you know, Dr. Sterling, maybe you're right. I mean, I'm a maker, but what I really need to do is like up my game and I gotta become more like Group OT. And I was like, I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna move from like my hobby to like a world scale technology art movement. How do I get there? I had better go bother Serena Canjano. You know, I'll, I'll ask Serena for help. No, that's not what you should do. What you should do is offer help to Serena. Offer help to her, don't ask for any help. I will quote, a political leader of the 1960s, which was the heyday of Group OT, ask not what maker fine art can do for you, ask what you can do for maker fine art. And especially her and women like her, because the art world is organized by women, women like her. Women are half the avant-garde. So take them very seriously and see how that works out for you. Thanks for your attention. That's true. That's it.